Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I want you to join me because I've got an item over here. A very special one, it could be a game changer for our hobbies. This came all the way from other side of the planet, sent to me by Banggood to have a look at and I think we'll do a little bit more with that today. We'll have a look at it of course and take it apart, test it and see if it does what it claims on the box or in the listing. Because the claims from the listing are quite remarkable. And here we are. The box says DSO-168. Here is the label. DSO-168 20M 100M. Well, that claims to be 20 MHz 100 Meg sampling per second. And this is a pocket oscilloscope. Why am I excited about this so much? Well, there are plenty of little tiny oscilloscopes out on the market. And to be honest, they're all junk. And there are two reasons why pocket oscilloscopes are junk in general bandwidth sampling rate you see most of them have got a bandwidth of a couple of hundred kilohertz good really as a toy it's really difficult to measure anything with them they're probably good just to play about with as a principle of operation i mean i've got a dso 068 the little blue oscilloscopes that i've used a couple of times and yes it can be handy but if you want to measure anything that's you know half a megahertz forget it it's just not gonna happen this here claims to be a 20 megahertz unit with 100 meg sampling per second of course something like this will never replace a real oscilloscope but it would be a handy addition i think to quickly have a look at a waveform quickly check a signal you know if it does what it says on the box there could be a use for it and we have a nice piece of card with a spec sheet it has been mounted into a reused fake ipod case which is funny but yeah okay there is combination button usage description okay so we'll go through that in a moment mode so there is something that resembles triggering some instructions here are the parameters 1.8 inch screen input 1 meg ohm 20 megahertz bandwidth sampling rate 100 meg samples per second rise time 20 nanoseconds storage depth 384 kilobytes 800 milliamp hour battery six hours continuous use charge 5 volt 1 amp 2 amp 4 amp do not use the computer usb okay it's probably quite power hungry for charging and uh, that's why it says not use the computer usb host 60 meg pro charging line and instructions those would be the instructions we've got two bags one will be the probe one would be the what do they call it the host those are the cables a usb3 cable that is strange oh no it's not a usb3 it's got a blue color like the usb3 but it's a usb2 to mini usb cable probe 1x10x with headphone what three and a half mil trs connector at the end that's a little bit unusual but i guess that matches the case they put this in which was originally designed for an mp3 player another bug here is the unit okay the probe is yeah the cheapest kind a little bit plastic it's the shiny plastic type of thing very similar to the probe that came with the own oscilloscope the metal on the ground connector is not as rough as on the own but that really doesn't matter at all and that's it so there is no other accessories that come with the probe like a ground point or anything like that and the trs three and a half mil connector the unit in its glory we've got the satisfaction moment much better five buttons so menu volume next previous and center there is one screw so we'll have a look inside in a moment there used to be a port over here or looks more like a sd card slot now it's just a gateway for all the dust and debris to make its way into the unit so let's see if we can work out how to switch it on do we press and hold one of oh oh it comes on it says battery is very low duty zero vrms zero volts okay so it even does some measurements how do I switch this off? A little bit complex to shut it down, keep the instructions because it's not straightforward. Let's open it up. If I put it flat on the bench, the reflectiveness kills the camera. Self-tapping screw straight into plastic. Here we are. Okay, there are two more screws holding the circuit board. I mean, if this works, if this shows a 20 megahertz square wave on the screen that doesn't look like a drawing made by a three-year-old, I will be amazed. There is nothing of interest on the front of it. Five buttons and that's it. Nothing there, so I'll just put it straight back in. 
shininess strikes again so a bit more tape on the battery has got no markings whatsoever so yeah it's a new product and they're clearly keeping it secret what has markings is this here it's a AD9283 50 80 100 meg samples per second 3 volt a to d converter analog band with 475 megahertz so far so good this a to d converter is able to deliver what they claim in the spec sheet that's good that's really good there is a whole bunch of those chips they're all the same thing let me see if i can get an angle that will show us i'm not sure what to make of that is that l108 or am i holding this upside down so L108356T. Sorry, no idea. Quick search, but no results whatsoever. Here we have a crystal, 20 megahertz crystal clocking this chip here. It is remarkable how simple this thing is when you look at it. Of course, all the magic is inside the A to D converter and this little processor here, whatever that is. Pretty much no components. Where is the front end? A handful of resistors and capacitors. There's nothing in here absolutely nothing i'm curious about this charging thing so let's see what the power meter is going to show okay 200 milliamps what 200 milliamps that's it so where is the four amp charging here it is on the banggood website 40 to 97 and yeah as long as it lives up to its claims it could be a useful gadget to have around i mean it doesn't do any maths or any advanced functions of the oscilloscope and it's only a single channel but hey i rather like it it's quite cute so the signal gen is connected here to the probe directly and we've got the probe with the trs jack let's plug that in and see what happens the scope is set to 2 volts per division 20 milliseconds we've got a sine wave 50 hertz it's showing us 50 hertz 3.9 volt peak to peak now depending on what shows in the middle Oh, this changes the time base so when it's a plus you can change the time base or the volts per division when it's got arrows you can move the waveform left and right and up and down and when it's on the trigger symbol like this you can move the trigger up and down change the coupling so i'll take this is ac and sorry dc and this is ac there is no compensation on the probe, so I'm curious to see what happens. Let's give it a square wave. Okay, that's a rather nice square wave. This thing works. That's noise. That's a heartbeat. Trapezoidal. It's a tiny little thing, but it actually does work. Okay, we're back to sine wave. Let's up the frequency a little bit. So that's 100 hertz. 500. There is no auto set. Okay, 1 millisecond, 600 hertz. Yeah, it works. 1 kilohertz. Okay, now it's going to start getting interesting. So, 5 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. And it's holding the amplitude. Still, we're at 40 kilohertz. 80, 90. You know what? This is still rather good. Let's keep going. 100 kilohertz. 200, 300. A megahertz. This is showing a megahertz. 1 megahertz sine wave. How is that doing it? 2, 3, 4 five it has dropped off a little bit on the amplitude of the signal and it's getting a little bit jumpy we are we are at five megahertz we are at a quarter of claimed bandwidth so let's see what keeps going seven eight yeah it's starting to be a little bit you can barely make up what this waveform is right now 10 megahertz the bandwidth should be of when it drops i think it's 0 0.7 of the original signal so we are at 6 megahertz right now about here is the usable bandwidth okay we are at 20 megahertz so okay 50 millivolts so this is a 20 megahertz sine wave fed into this and yeah not so much so about 4 megahertz it it kind of deals with it even 5 megahertz i would say it's yeah it does it quite nicely so yeah this is quite usable for a lot of little things moment of truth let's see what it does if we change to a square and that's a square so yeah let's see where at what point we'll be able to say this is actually a square ah uh, okay so 2 megahertz it's able to show us our 2 megahertz square wave there is no compensation on the probes over here that's one thing for the price for how simple it is i think this is brilliant perhaps not exactly 20 megahertz bandwidth as claimed but still far more than i expected from this so let's leave it at one megahertz and let's keep changing the 
waveform so that's a pulse it's a triangle sawtooth negative sawtooth well is it going to replace a real scope uh, no definitely not is it a toy or a tool i think both you know it is a toy but it's it's a usable tool within four megahertz ish it's quite very usable actually i really like this and the screen is quite clear and visible as a complement to another device that you've got that's a little bit more precise I guess then yes absolutely this could work I've noticed when I switch the channel on and off on the signal generator it, the waveform doesn't just disappear it's becoming smaller and smaller so that tells me this thing does a lot of averaging because of that this will probably find it very difficult to capture anomalies of the signal because it does averaging and obviously averaging is meant to reject any anomalies so that's worth remembering here is a 50 millivolt 1 megahertz sine wave I'm feeding into it. That's quite good, I think. Okay, 20 millivolts and it's, yeah, it's a little bit more challenging to see anything on the 0.1 volt. Not bad. Okay, that's 10 volts per, per division, 20 volt 1 megahertz sine wave square. Okay, for what it is, how small and cute it is, I think this is fantastic. I really like this. It's not a full-size real scope and it will not do what a real full-size scope does however for 42 pounds is it worth having i think so if you want something that's going to show you a waveform within the bandwidth limit of this thing i think this is one of the better things that exist right now on the market and one of the cheaper ones that can deliver something like that i mean there are scope meters that cost an order of magnitude more than this and wouldn't be able to cope with this sort of bandwidth so yeah this is quite nice for this video that's it thank you very much for watching this will be featured on the channel a few more times without a doubt because it works it is usable but if you like the video give me a thumbs up and please remember to subscribe for more random electronics related stuff. Share the video, comment below and take care I guess.